An abundance of research has been conducted over the last 50 years on the effect that nature has on human beings. The psychological effects alone include benefits like decreased anxiety, stress and anger, improved self-esteem, and treatment of depression. There's another branch of that research I want to discuss here, however, because of its implications for your motivation. That branch deals with the effect nature has on cognition or mental functioning. I've included links to some of this research if you want to learn more, but there are literally hundreds of studies on this topic that approach it from every conceivable angle. One of the most widely held theories on the benefits of nature on human cognition is called attention restoration theory. Much of the research that's been conducted over the last 25 years have been attempts to confirm or refute specific elements of this theory. Attention restoration theory was developed by professors Rachel Kaplan, PhD, and Stephen Kaplan, PhD, of the University of Michigan in the 1980s. Attention restoration theory asserts that there are two different types of attention, directed attention and effortless attention. Directed attention requires you to consciously focus your mind to perform higher order functions like evaluating or constructing logical arguments, inferring meaning, evaluating risks and consequences, and making decisions. Those complex mental processes require a high level of focus and mental energy, not only to perform the task itself, but also to resist distractions and impulses to do other things. Directed attention then, by definition, requires self-control. And I've discussed the concept of self-control in another video and how you can strengthen it so that your normal or baseline level of self-control increases over time. In this post, my primary focus is the effect that nature has on replenishing your self-control muscle when it has been weakened or depleted. This is relevant to your motivation because low motivation is often the result of a lack of self-control to resist your impulses that try to convince you to do something easier or more pleasurable. Spending a significant amount of time directing your attention at a task or a series of tasks results in what attention restoration theory calls directed attention fatigue. This fatigue steadily diminishes your effectiveness, meaning your ability at any point in time to produce high quality work. I've discussed the concept of effectiveness in another post and you can check it out here. One of the fundamental assumptions of attention restoration theory is that complex cognitive functions and self-control both draw from the same energy source. There is some debate within the academic community whether that energy source is purely physiological, i.e. the quality and quantity of your food supply, purely psychological, or some combination of the two. In either case, being out in nature has been shown to replenish this shared resource. Exposure to nature has been shown to improve focus, working memory, cognitive performance, and even your self-control. It's important to note that exposure to nature does not simply mean getting outside, although it could, depending on where you live. Getting outside in an urban setting does not provide the attentional relief that natural settings do. That's because urban environments are full of things that capture your attention, like car horns, sirens, billboards, and stoplights. Even worse, many of those same things also require you to use directed attention for the purpose of making a decision. For example, you need to decide when it's safe to cross the street, what to do when you hear that siren, and what to do with the information you just saw on that billboard. Consequently, urban settings continue the cycle of directed attention fatigue. Natural environments, on the other hand, invoke the other kind of attention described in attention restoration theory, effortless attention. Generally speaking, natural settings do not pull at your attention relentlessly, forcing you to make decision after decision. Instead, they inspire quiet observation, appreciation, and relaxation. While you do need to get outside regularly if you want to sustain these benefits long term, the research has shown that even short-term exposure can yield a temporary boost in the benefits I described earlier. It's worth noting that cell phones and other attention-grabbing devices produce the same kinds of stimulation as urban environments. So even if you do get away into a natural setting, if you carry your cell phone with you, you won't get the same benefits because you stuck a piece of urban life in your pocket before you left. If you want to multiply the benefits of nature, you can do what's called green exercise, which is just a name for physical activity that's performed in a natural setting rather than in your home or at the gym. The nice thing about green exercise is that you can compound the restorative benefits that nature has on your self-control with exercise. I've discussed the benefits that exercise has on your self-control and motivation in another video, and I've included the link to it here. So the takeaway from this research is that if you want to reduce your stress level, improve your mood and self-esteem, and ramp up your memory and self-control, start scheduling regular nature breaks into your routine. If you can do it every day or at least something close to it, you will benefit significantly. But even if you live in a densely urban area and can only get away on the weekends, it will still yield benefits that will make it worth the trip. If you like this video, please click the like button and share it with your friends. 
If you want to learn more about how you can supercharge your motivation, check out my website by clicking on my logo. My goal is to help you with your motivation challenges. If you have a specific problem you'd like help with, you can reach out to me directly at rich at the motivation mindset .com. Thanks for watching.